Grant, we'll start off with the, the Antrim football replay. It's just been like Michael Devlin, he, it's Carrigan against Love Jarrick, and Michael Devlin messaged in saying Love Jarrick going into their seventh game in the Antrim Championship with the replay against Carrigan on Saturday. Semi final trilogy with Casements, three games in 10 days, including the cancelled free kick competition in the second game. Saturday's game is finished on the day, possibility of free kicks again. It's nuts, isn't it? Yeah, it is mad. It's, it's some amount of traffic for, for bodies to be going through. But kind of when you're winning, when you're winning, it's it's okay. Like there's some amount of drama involved there, and even we did obviously we chatted about the the goalkeepers and the Lord, Lord yeah. Mayor of everything. There's so much, uh, there's so much in that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that that finished one uh, one ten to thirteen points the last day. Thomas McCann he took the game to a replay. So Cavan, the final is on this weekend. Castle Rahan against uh, Rammer United. It's a repeat of the twenty sixteen decider, which Rammer won after a replay. So it could be a tight one again. Just looking at the two semi-finals, Castle Rahan beat Cavan Gales, won 11 to 9 points, and I don't think everyone would have necessarily... No, definitely coming. not, no. Yeah, Oshie McConnell, or O'Connell, I should say, got a goal, and there was points from Carol uh, Cosgrove, Keane Mackey, of course, who everyone would know, uh, Oshie Kieran apparently scored a brilliant 45 at one It's a great story as well, coming back, yeah, you know, after his illness, yeah. yeah. Uh, they're in the final for the fifth year running, but um, Castle Rahan, they're the champions, but they lost three in a row before that. So, geez, they know the taste of the feed and they won't want, won't want to go back there. And to be honest, if you get used to losing finals, it can kind of become a thing. As well, kind of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. as as Open Smart, as may all know only too yeah. well. And even like Owlert and Leinster finals were struggling for years yeah. as well, like, you know. Why'd you have to bring that up? <laughs> That's the second week in a row, managed over, to do that. <laughs> yeah, they got over the line against Cool in 2015. Um, so the other semi final then was Rammer United beat Crosser Lock 2 8 to 12 points. James Brady scored 1 5. Simon Cadden got a goal. And an interesting um, kind of side sideshow or, or whatever way you want to call it for this is that one of the, so there's Connor Bradley, he's on the Cavan panel. And do you remember that game between Ross Common and Cavan that had about eight goals in it? Oh yeah, that was deadly game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Park. He scored one of the goals in that. But his brother, right, he, he has this play called Grounds for Concern. And the play explores mental health of rural GA players in the build up to county finals. Brilliant, I don't really know about that. And, and what he's uh, and like what he has seen in local communities throughout his life. So it was at the Fringe Festival and it's going to be performed in the Rammer United dressing rooms on November thirtieth and December first. That's deadly. Yeah, that's mad. If they want to bring us up or anything to give a review of it, we gladly will. That's yeah, deadly, that's, that's a great idea. Yeah. And um, Grode McKiernan, by the way, while we're on yeah, so, so the yeah. he's gonna leave Swandabar who've just been um relegated to join Cavan Gales who lost that semi-final what do you make of that like he's living in Cavan Town uh, yeah I, I, I don't know I'd like to know a bit more a bit more yeah. about a bit more about it like um, how far is Swanabar away from mm. from Cavan Gales um, he'd probably leave a, a bit of a sour taste there like the club getting relegated and then seeing your best player go. yeah it's tough yeah like he's what 26, 27 he's probably he would feel coming into his prime and maybe wants to, you know, play straight at club level at a higher level. I don't know, but it's a, it's a big, it's a big loss for a club like that going down and then losing your basically your star man who you'd probably be relying on for the next ten years. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's yeah. a tough one to lose for them. Um. So the Cork semi finals are on this weekend. Do Hallow against uh, Nooses Town. So um, the combo do Hallow do Hallow lost the uh, finals in twenty twelve and eighteen. Nooses Town never got into a final. The other side of it then, Douglas against Nemo. I've always felt that at this stage, Douglas would have taken over in one quarter or the other. I would have thought so too, but honest with you, yeah. Yeah, the likes of the Cadigans there that people would know. Um, just the player, some of the players on this football team. Like they've made one final ever, which they lost to Nemo. Uh, they took out a very good Balancolic team in, semi, uh, in the last eight. Conor Russell got the goal, but their midfield is, is apparently very good. Niall and uh, Brian Hartnett, their brothers. But then, you know, you've got the Cadigans in there. You've got um, Shane Kingston, the footballer, who who was brilliant in the quarterfinal despite having a chest infection. And yeah. Sean Powder, who I think, if you took injuries away from him, he'd be one of the best footballers in the country. Yeah, if if um, if they can get him fit next year for Cork, imagine him coming into... like That was a really promising um, it was a really promising championship campaign from Cork. Get who him could now be in the uh, tier two. Yeah, that's so they've got, mad stuff. Uh, they've got Kerry on their side of the championship. And if they don't beat Kerry... The proposed tier two, they'd be in the tier two championship. It's insane. I think the I think the draw has shot the tier two in the foot a fair yeah. bit. Because Cork are one of the few teams that gave Dublin a decent game. Fair enough, Dublin were always going that was, to that That was a really enjoyable game. Brilliant. Have For to say. 60 to yeah. 65 minutes. Okay, there was the inevitability at the back of your mind of Dublin winning. But you were like, just this Cork team can put it up to them. And imagine them going on another year or two, getting more exposure 
uh, in the Super 8s, which where they didn't win again. They won the minor in the 20s as well. Yeah. Like. But imagine another year or two of playing the top teams all the time. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're saying, well, look, I know you pushed them very close, but uh, back to the Tier 2 and we're going to have other teams that get spanked by Dublin in Tier 1. Yeah, and like it'd be just on power again, like Ronan McCarthy would like love to have him yeah. fully, fully fit. He's had, he's had a bit of a disaster the last 18 months even, um, but he's really exciting, unbelievably fast. Nominated for Young Footballer of the Year last year, I think, or the year before, yeah. Um, so, as I said, that's Douglas. Uh, Nemo, they've won 10 titles this decade. Last one in 2017. They ended up getting uh, beaten well by Cora Finn in the All Ireland final. Uh, the likes of Paul Kerrigan, Luke Connolly, they beat St. Finbar's 112 to 8 points in the quarter final. Fair beaten champions, champions yeah. yeah. Kept them scoreless for 28 minutes in the second half. So, we're talking about a decent team who know how to shut you down. Right, the Dublin quarter finals this weekend. There's some heavy hitting games here. So, just to run through them. Uh, St. Jude's against St. Vincent's, the Battle of the Saints. Uh, Ballyboden St. Enders against Nafina, Clontarf against Kilmacud Croaks, and Castleknock against Thomas Davis. So, just a quick overview of Jude's. They topped their group. They've got the likes of Kevin McManam and Niall Coakley, who played for, for Cork for a while. Like When I watch them, I think this is a big physical team, a couple of nice forwards. They can move. You know, There's a lot of, a lot of speed around the team. And they beat Vincent's very well in the semi final yeah. this year. It was 2 11 to 8 points beaten finalists last year. They feel like a team that have been on the cusp for a long time, but I don't quite know if they will ever get over that line. But um, definitely a good team. Jude's have a lot of imports, to be fair to say. Mm, they have an, have an awful lot of imports. Yeah. Um, if, you were, if you were to chat... If you were to chat they someone, don't have Dermo. They don't have Dermo, no. But if you were to chat someone within Jude's who's Jude's born and bred, they wouldn't be particularly happy with the amount just... That, like they have a huge amount of them by all accounts. Yeah, well, there can be a point when that maybe goes too far, especially if a lot of noses are being put out of joint with the locals. I mean, just look what happened with Parnells. They yeah. They brought in way too many, and wasn't it even the case that Stephen Cluxton was lining out for the second team? Can, can, the pull, the, can pull the soul out of your team if you're not careful. Yeah, it has to be done the right way. Uh, Ballyboden against Nafina. So Nafina beat Ballymun and beat them well. Yeah. So they can't be... Um, like, Ballyboden hammered Scaries. It just felt like such a pointless game. So early on you were like, oh, this is so drab. Uh, Clontarf against... Four those games on telly as well, yeah. Saturday night should be interesting. Yeah. Clontarf against the champions, Kilmacud, so geez, Jack McCaffrey's going to have a fair bit through on his own. Yeah, I think th I was uh, when, the, when I saw they got through to the quarterfinal, they're immediately thinking, that's a fair achievement. It, that's where it's going to end. They got through with just one win. Yeah. And like, they lost to Scaries, who I just said got annihilated by Ballyboden. They beat a poor Luke. One nowhere that, yeah. Here. Croaks got the Leinster final, lost the Leinster final to Molyneachta and brilliant and all as Molyneachta were, like a Dublin team for what rightly or wrongly feels like they're going to beat a Longford team, when they, and I'd yeah. say they would have been the butt of many a joke within Dublin again rightly or wrongly, so they'll be looking to. They're your favourites to win Dublin realistically with a point to prove. Paul yeah, in there and like Pat Burke is still doing it up front, uh, former Dublin and Clare footballer. Keenan Sullivan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Croke's top. The Rory O'Carroll, of course, back and uh, have loads of yeah. football under his belt as well. Um, they topped the group that had Ballymun and Nafina, so obviously they're right up there as favourites. And Kiss Castleknock against Thomas Davis, so Castle or Thomas Davis got through on score difference from their group, a win and a draw. Whereas Castleknock topped the group with St Vincent's, Ballantyre, and St Bridget's. Yeah, very so, hard to see Castleknock been beaten yeah. in that one. Uh, Kerry Football Championship Round 3 refixture Kilcommon against St Kieran's that's in Fitzgerald Stadium then looking ahead to Mead semi-finals this weekend Simonstown against Summerhill and Gail Cullum Kill against Rathold so just to start off with Simonstown Andy, Andy Kearney, um, sco Kearney scored 2-3 off the bench uh, when they beat Don Shocklin 2-3 off the bench he's after sewing it into the manager yeah, there, isn't he and saying you have to start me Ah, but will we keep him in reserve? He's going to do that again. Kevin McManaman. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it can. Sometimes you have a guy where the manager is putting an awkward. Could be putting an awkward spot now. Yeah. He mightn't. He mightn't make an influence off from the start. Yeah. But when a game loosens up a bit, he could be ideal. It's an. It's an awkward kind of a spot. Yeah. Summerhill now, who they're playing against, they had won five on the on the scoreboard inside seven minutes when they beat Nafina. And they won it like three nine three nineteen to one eleven. So won that very. This is very like nicely. Simon Sam would have won. Like, did back to back, and before that, Summer Hill would have won a couple. Mm -hmm. And Simon so, Sam hadn't won it ever before. That. That's right. Yeah. Work yeah. was over the team. Yeah. Um, so Gail come kill against Rat Oates. So Rat Oates, they had a four sixteen to one six victory over a screen that you know didn't have um, Paddy O'Rourke, who of course was the county goalkeeper and plays outfield for them. 
They've got a lot of pace in the team. They were at Oat, Eamon Wallace, Joey Wallace Brothers and Brian McMahon, who's a brilliant footballer for me. Eamon Wallace would have ran uh, on 400 metres for Ireland yeah. at Lex, like That just shows you the sort of pace yeah. they have. And Gail Colin, Pil- Colin-, Colin Kilby, Dunamore, Ashburn, 112 to 9 points on the way uh, to this stage. So the Monaghan semi-final replay, I think Clon Tribbert are awaiting in the final. Uh, Bally Bay against Scotstown, that was 1-8 to 11 in the drawing game. Scotstown chasing a five in a row. And, uh, and like remember, I was only kind of looking back on it, looking back on the year last year. Like Scotland were beaten after extra time in the Ulster final last year. Yeah, yeah. You know, like there was serious, a serious side. A lot of a lot of young blood, kind of as well. Obviously mixed in with your Rory Beggins as yeah. well, and Shane Carey, and a few more. Well, the importance of having a great goalkeeper, obviously at county level, but at club level. Like if you've got a lad distribu- distributing the ball well, or who has a bit of composure when the ball goes back to him, you know he's going to get the kickouts right. Most other teams don't have that. So no. God knows how much that's worth you, the knock-on effect of that truth. And plus, point. like he's going to be a solid long-range free-taker as well. Yeah. I always kind of talk about like when you're coaching kids, like there's a load of skills are really, really important. But if you have... If you if you have a good free-taker and you're able to take over line balls, you can stay hurling till you're 45. Yeah. And same fo- same teams, in football. There are many teams who have lost untold amount of county titles because they don't have a free-taker. 100%, taker. yeah. Like, you look at Tumivara and Tipperary, how many county titles did they win? Because Ken Dunn would knock over every That's a fact, yeah. He was double figures most days. Yeah. So, like, I kind of, I always think it's funny, like, there's a lot of things worked on in the games. They are two of the staples. If you're able to put over freeze consistently, um, for over 20 years of your career and same if they can put over a line ball there's some amount of games he can win yeah, yeah you know? for sure uh, so Scotstown had trailed by 9 points to 2 at the break Shane Carey got their goal and uh, it had looked like Kieran Hughes had struck the winner but Paul Finlay rolling back in years <laughs> what a left foot a late free now that we mentioned free so uh, a replay was decided rather than playing extra time so there is a classic play. example as well though there is a sweet left foot he'll always have a sweet left foot yeah. if Paul Finlay is still standing like and able to run when he's 50 he could still kick freeze like do you know what I mean um, so the down football final is on this weekend and of course a word for him and Burns who passed away suddenly at the age of 54 double All-Ireland winner so ah it's really sad like it's only over only over down the year before last like it's, mm. ma- it's mad yeah it's um, obviously he was honoured was he honoured this year he was honoured this year yeah. at the All-Ireland final the, the Jubilee, Jubilee at yeah. Silver Jubilee as well yeah so, it's, it's very sad yeah, yeah. but all accounts and just reading some of the the um you know diff- people saying different things about him like you know a son of a son of down GA was one what one people said like yeah. he just lived for down football. Best wishes to his friends and family of course at this tough time. Um, the football final this weekend is uh, Kilku against Warren Point. So Kilku are looking for seven and eight seasons. What a management team in Mickey Moran and Conor Gilligan, Conor Laverty is the name that stands out on the field. Warren Point last won it in 1948. So they hammered Bally Holland. Bally Holland in the semi-final won by 17 points and uh, Ross McGarry scored 111 but there was an interview with uh, yeah. Lionel McAleenan and he was talking about the perception that of a soft town yeah I saw, so that, I saw that I saw that actually Irish yeah yeah there. okay I wrote that piece you'd always see that though that's one yeah. boys, these boys are from well, like I'm, I'm from the town as well we, we've never uh, maybe we've had a bit thrown at us as well at times yeah but it's funny it's funny like it's just like when you're a country team, you're going to be a real hard, solid yeah. team. You're going to get everything. Just because you're from the Huge town, it's granite. almost like, yeah, oh, the boys, these boys are a bit soft. It's mad, yeah. But yeah. it's amazing they came out and said that. I'm delighted they actually said, you know, townie has uh, been soft. Just a bit of context in this. So, um, one point, they're sweating on the fitness of Captain Ryan Boyle. He missed the semi-final with a quad injury. And um, his red card on the second book in last year kind of ended their chances of beating Kilku and they were in contention until the last 10 minutes and then they lost. So obviously they'll feel that they have a right chance here, yeah. so we'll see how that goes. Uh, the leash final is on this weekend. Kaleshin, who are, uh, geez, they haven't been here too often. No, they? definitely <laughs> not. Against no. Port Leash, who are never but they're here. So Port Leash are looking to win 12 of 13, which is kind of Dublin and Leinster type affair. Savage. That's how much yeah. there. They're a bit more. They're, they're a bit more susceptible to being caught. Like they're, they're, there's been tight games, and I don't know. Was it the semi final that they were pushed close and were down a good yeah, bit and had yeah, to come yeah, back? Yeah. So like it's not. It's it's dominance, but there have been opportunities to take mm-hmm. them down at different stages. Saying that, that the year, Stra- yeah, way, yeah, the year Stradbally beat them was like the most dream scenario of yeah, all time. Smash and grab. Yeah, it was a brilliant goal. Yeah, yeah brilliant yeah. last minute goal. So just a bit about to make a case for a collection. A bit of a mixture of youth and experience. David Aston, he's a great dead ball taker. Uh, they've senior county players like Stephen Atright who had that double fracture to his yeah, skull last year. Yeah, it's great seeing back. Yeah, Owen Lowry as well. They've a stalwart Cahill Brennan leading the charge. Their manager, Morris Brown, 
tends to win titles wherever he manages, whether it's Gus Rann in Wexford or the Carlo CBS, who had an All-Ireland Senior Football B uh, title. There are lads like that, though, managers, and they just... It's not that they're going to a team like that have an unbelievable amount of potential or lads that are going to win like county titles, but they just seem to get the best out of it. Like it, if you look at like back through, just say Padjo Whelan, for example. Mm-hmm. Padjo Whelan trained Burr to win, I think, seven county titles, three All Ireland's, God knows how many Leinsters. Trained Toome to win a Tipperary, trained Nina Rogue to win their last Tipperary. He trained Crinkle and Nader Neighbouring Club of Burr to win a Junior C and a Junior B. Um, like it's just certain lads like yeah. just seem Mickey to get the. Whelan. Go yeah, or Mick- sorry, Mickey Moore. Mickey Moore, Moore. Uh, Mickey well. Moore, just success just follows him everywhere he goes. The Loud final is on this weekend. Uh, Newtown Blues, uh, who are the traditional kind of powerhouses of Loud football, they've won twenty titles against Nave Martin, the Jocks, who have never won it. And, the uh, Jocks, the Jocks, Jocks for Joe, the Joe, the Joe something or other is the name of the county title. But uh, I'd have a couple of friends from Monaster Boys who who were part of the the Nave Martin club. So I remember uh, him telling me, Paddy Sullivan telling me that. Um, it was one of these things that they always thought they were taking it seriously, you know. Yeah. So he's now a bit older and he'd sort of be part of the, the backroom team and playing with the second team. But he said that they used to think that they were making pushes, but it's only the last few years that they actually realised, all right, we weren't actually, <laughs> we weren't quite as professional as we thought we needed to be. But they've been making strides at a semi-final in a few years gone by. They lost the final last year. And I think I mentioned earlier about you know, with the, the likes of Castle Rahan, you don't want to get used to losing finals. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I think it is important for Nave Martins to win this here. Like, but there's a lot of quality on the Blues side. You know, Andy McDonald, he's been county captain. Colin George, excellent player. And he might actually kind of sit back and try and dictate play. Um, okay. So it'll be interesting to see how Nave Martins, will they kind of, will they sit back themselves and sort of make him, force him up the field. Ross Nally's another player. But, um, yeah, I th- I, like, the interesting thing about Nave Martins too is they've done something that, Nemo Rangers have done in terms of their underage setup. Okay. So you know if you have thirty players who can play underage or thirty five or whatever, you might go with a, an A team with all the best players and a B team with all the lads. Mix the two. The best players, but they mix up the Brilliant, two of them, yeah. and that I think that raises the level of the players that take a little bit longer. Yeah. Because some young lads they might be late bloomers. They're put in with the weaker players, and they never quite get up to that level. But if you mix them all together, then you might. And he he was telling me that they brought through an awful lot of players in the last couple of years mm. that have come through at the one time and uh, Nemo Rangers have done it too. I so love that kind of stuff. stuff. Like It's basically, you're taking the competitive element out of it and it's all about development and it's all about trying to maintain and maximise the amount of numbers you're going to have yeah. playing adult football and yeah. it's great, it's brilliant. Yeah, so people forgive me if I'm pushing hard for Nave Martins to win this <laughs> um, The Offaly final is on this weekend. Your boys, for Van against Road. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting game. It's the third time they've met in the final in the last four years. Um, Road are carrying a couple of serious knocks and serious doubts into the final. Niall McNamee was, was basically linked off the pitch with what looked like kind of a concussion or a head injury, mm. a high elbow, and he's a serious doubt. Uh, definitely didn't train at the weekend with Road anyway. Brian Darby is the same. Um, they were both kind of togged out um, for their training at the weekend, but they didn't actually do anything. So... Like they'd be like particularly Niall, like if Niall was missing, that'd be a massive loss. Kevin Egan gave a bit of uh, journalist Kevin Egan gave a bit of background to this. He was saying for band manager is Sean Dempsey of Leash, brother of Mick Kilkenny Hurley, yeah, who yeah, talked yeah. about leading the senior panel with Brian Cody. And his main two selectors are for band men Paul Mullen and John Keena. In nineteen eighty nine, thirty years ago, for band played St Joseph's in the Leinster Club uh, Championship. Sean played full forward for St Joseph's, Mark and John Keena and Paul Mullen played full forward for Furban. Mark and Martin Dempsey, who's Sean's older brother. Yeah, loads of stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It's the wheel like doesn't be long turning. Like no. it's amazing, and they probably would have maybe. Do you think ch- we'll ever be managing teams against each other? Uh, it'd be good crack, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. You never know how things pan out this year. We could end up against each other and sitting on benches. Yeah. Opposite yeah. Each other. Basically, the, the narrative around it would be: there's them two idiots and know nothing about it. Yeah. <laughs> the our game clash. It uh, should be interesting though, because. Like we were saying about, uh, we were saying in an earlier video about teams being less reluctant to have someone who's involved in a county setup be involved in managing. Yeah. So like Pascal Kellen, who was uh, basically lead coach with Westmead uh, under Jack Cooney. Mm-hmm. Jack Cooney, who was over road last year and could be still involved with him. I'm not sure. Pascal is definitely involved with him and has come back in since Westmead finished up. So like Pascal, unbelievable experience. Road kind of stalwart as mm-hmm. well. 
if they're to win this county final, it will probably be the best county final they've won, especially if they're carrying a couple of big injuries into it. If you're talking about a side that totally gets the most out of themselves and that kind of rural kind of side that's so together and tight knit, Road are a classic example of it. And like they were beaten, they were narrowly beaten by Mullen Yachta last year and would have fancied their chances of getting to a Leinster club final last 30 year. County titles. Yeah, serious yeah. in fairness. Yeah. But you have a bit of skin in the game for Fraban, don't you? I would, yeah. No, my mother, my mother is from Fraban and would have a cousin that was around the panel there the last couple of years. Would you have ever had a Fraban jersey thrown in your growing up? I actually played uh, an under twenty one final for Fraban, yeah. Right. Under twenty one A football, yeah. We because which did you lose by? We were beaten by a pint by Road, two pints in injury time. Niall Darby kicked the last two pints. Niall Darby, who's actually Road captain, and it's still my biggest GA regret to this day. Really? Yeah, and no, I was ah. just—it was sickening, like yeah. And I think it was like I was having my twenty first that night as well. So everything kind of just went against us. That'll be really interesting. And no one showed up, obviously. <laughs> no one showed up. No, uh, very interesting game. Uh, Belmont, the the hurling wing of Forban, were beaten in the hurling semi final last weekend. Bel uh, Forban have done massive work at underage. Have won titles at every age group now yeah. and need to win a senior. There's a bit of pressure on them. This is their chance, and I probably would just about go for them. I'd say. There's 17 county finals between both codes this weekend, so we'll plough on and chat about a few more of them. Roscommon final this weekend, Pawdy Pierce's against Roscommon Gales, so 12 men Pawdy Pierce's. Uh, yeah, 12 apostles, the yeah. So they beat Boyle 310 to 114, and uh, Roscommon Gales beat Strokestown 113 to 10 points. Pierce's have never won, have never won a, a Roscommon title. Pat Flanagan, a former Sligo manager, former, former Westmead Offley. manager, Offaly manager. Um, so he's looking to bring them to the promised land for the first time. Should yeah. be an interesting game. And there's deferred coverage of that game on TG Carr. The Tyrone finals on this weekend, Erdil Kieran against Trillick. So Erdil Kieran beat Carrick Moore 111 to 9 points. They won their last title in 2012. Dara Canavan, son of Peter, scored the goal in the semi-final. Son of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Peter, Peter Hart scored seven points. Now, that was between freeze and play. The other semi-final was Trillick beating Cole Island by a point. meant to be an absolutely brilliant game. Uh, Trillick are 2015 champions. Cole Island were the champions, so they've dethroned them. And you're looking at the likes of the Donnelly brothers, Matty and Richie Donnelly. Brennan. Lee Brennan. Yeah, yeah. Lee and Rory, yeah. A guy who stepped away from the panel, even though he looks like he has savage scores. And it was there some game last year he scored 3 8 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it could have been even more than that. I thought, I thought it was 3 11 off, maybe, off hand. Yeah, maybe it was like 3 8 from play. Could have been, yeah. Could have been, yeah. Anyway. Uh, the West Mead finals on this weekend Gary Castle against St. Lomans. And uh, if you check on the Our Game uh, football section there, there is a, p a preview with Bernard Flynn who'd know the, the Westmead football uh, scene very well. Gary Castle is an interesting one because Desi is still going at Desi 40 for Gary, yeah, for Gary Castle. And John Keane, who probably would have marked him in every training session for Westmead, and two-time All-Star cornerback, who was always tasked with picking up the Brogans any time they played, particularly Allen, is the manager. And there's a great picture the last day of the two. Desi obviously was getting ready to come on and even maybe giving a bit of guidance to John, just the two of them talking on the sideline yeah. during the match and everything. Yeah, But it's an interesting find. Lomans obviously beaten last year by Mullingar Shamrocks Luke Dempsey is still over them and remember we talked about being beaten at the death by yeah. Moorfield in that Leinster final as well so they'll be looking to get back uh, and give Leinster another shot probably Lomans are one of the teams that maybe have underachieved a small bit in Leinster like they've obviously been beaten by a couple of good good sides but maybe you would have expected yeah. the Moorfield game was probably their chance to, yeah. to win Leinster St Vincent's went down 14 men a number of years ago yeah. which Brendan sent off uh, the Wexford final is on this weekend, Castletown against Gusseran. So I think people in general might expect Castletown to win here. They've looked the best year, but they, they probably struggled in the sem second half of their semi final against St. Martins. Um, they picked up a couple of injuries. Apparently, Liam Coleman is a doubt. Maybe Ben Brosnan, who has been flying all this year. I think people might remember him from Wexford with the shock of blonde hair. That's yeah, right. The freeze. Ben Brosnan transferred to Castletown in recent years, I think. Mm, I, yeah, could, I, could, I could be wrong. Of course, we talked about Gus Rand before and that, that, that great tweet they put out against, <laughs> against, Rod, against Rod that day. But um, I, think, I think there's been something like 10 different winners of the, or throughout this de decade, nine different winners of the Wexford Senior mm. Football Championship in the last nine years or something like you that. You were right well. about the, the transfer. He was with uh, Bano Ballymitty and uh, his, his transfer was initially rejected, but of course he's there now. That's right. He uh, Ben Brosnan runs his own um, body bro, isn't yeah, it? body bro, yeah, yeah. nice gear actually. Uh, Gus Ran send us out a couple of tops, Ben. Yeah, horse and mouth. Gus Ran, like you said with their tweet, very dangerous up front, but apparently, yeah, just Castletown look a little bit stronger overall. So, but those injury concerns could uh, play a part yet. Yeah. And then finally, the Wicklow final is on this week. Uh, this weekend. 
uh, Geraldine's, Arco Geraldine's Bally Money, they needed a replay to get through here and they're against St. Pat's. So that's the that's the final game of the weekend. We'll see how that one goes. Yeah, Pat's will be strong favourites there. Um, I know they had that horrible situation last year where they played the county final replay, I think, on the Saturday and then played in the Leinster Championship against Road on the Sunday. But um, they're, they're a strong side and by all accounts have been the best side throughout all the group stages in Wicklow. Um, and Arclough Jurors, uh, Bally Money will be up against it, I'd say. Mm. So that's it for the Club Talk Hurling. If there's anything we missed, don't be afraid to send in a message to us. At Club Talk Football. Club Talk Football. Yeah, <laughs> uh, look. Even <laughs> yeah, God Almighty. But anyway, send us in any stories we might have missed to at Shane Saint or at ML Bernie and uh, we might feature them on the show next week.